Have you ever heard of Yellowstone star Kevin Costner? If not, you're probably missing out. From dramas to comedies, Kevin always delivers a great performance. In fact, he has had a very distinguished career, and his list of accomplishments is endless. This underrated actor has some amazing movies under his belt, and we're going to tell you about them. Stay tuned to find out the blockbuster movies that you may not have heard of. First up is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves is one of the most popular movies that Costner has appeared in. In the movie, Robin of Loxley narrowly escapes jail in Jerusalem. He succeeds in escaping from jail and saving Azim, who was portrayed by Morgan Freeman. The Sheriff of Nottingham seized control of the region and persecuted its residents during Robin's tenure in Jerusalem, England. The role that Costner played in the movie is outside of his typical administrative or sporting role. Robin leads a gang of men in battle against Nottingham's sheriff as a fighter for the outcasts. He encourages a band of criminals to have faith in their abilities and the likelihood of achieving freedom. Hollywood's attempts to adapt the Robin Hood legend for the big screen have met with varying degrees of success. Disney's animated film is regarded as a classic, and even more highly regarded is the Adventures of Robin Hood from 1938. However, other endeavors haven't exactly been as fruitful. Some of the films starring Russell Crowe, Patrick Bergen, and others received negative reviews, while others earned positive and negative feedback. When it comes to movie versions of the timeless legend, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves may not be regarded as the finest or the worst, but it undoubtedly has fans. In addition, Mel Brooks's Robin Hood Men in Tights was influenced by this movie. Next, we have Hidden Figures. The Space Race is a 1960s-era contest between the U.S. and Russia. The tale of Mary Jackson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Katherine G. Johnson is depicted in the film Hidden Figures, which was portrayed by Janelle Monae, Taraji Henson, and Octavia Spencer in 2016. The calculations to send John Glenn into space have him orbit the Earth and safely land depend on these three women and their group in the West Wing. The NASA Space Task Group is headed by Al Harrison, who is portrayed by Costner. He inspires his team to look past the numbers and at the big picture, since he is a visionary. He recognizes Catherine's talent and gives her a chance to share her expertise with the other NASA employees. In the not-too-distant future, Costner and filmmaker Barry Levinson will also produce a series that will be all about NASA's Apollo 11. In this amazing tale, Kevin Costner portrayed the fictional character with actress Taraji P. Henson, Octavia Spencer, and Janelle Monae. Now for Field of Dreams. The film Field of Dreams, which is based on W.P. Kinsella's 1982 book titled Shoeless Joe, tells the story of a farmer who repeatedly hears the phrase, if you build it, he will come. He doesn't quite understand what the caller is talking about, but he does see a baseball diamond constructed on a section on his cornfield. Costner has been in other films in the sports field in addition to this one, but this one has a fictional sports element. His figure is portrayed as Ray Kinsella, whose father was a minor league baseball player. Ray believes that once he constructs a baseball field, Shoeless Joe Jackson will pay him a visit because he has faith in the incomprehensible and hopes for the impossible. Field of Dreams is a resounding winner in the exclusive category of movies that can make your dad cry. The Oscar-nominated sports film offers an intense but ultimately compelling examination of hope, ambition, tenacity, and parenthood. Its sweet-natured approach makes one think of classic movies, like the kind of old-fashioned American and flicks. Kevin Costner, however, gives a refined grace and sincerity to the lead role, catching the correct feeling of middle America's perseverance and tenacity, which continues to make him a charming and likable lead actor in the right parts. Field of Dreams is undoubtedly the kind of movie that best showcases his abilities as an actor, making it one of the most well-known and frequently rewatched films. Nevertheless, he's created a sizable film legacy for himself. Up next is Dances with Wolves. Few directors have the distinction of taking home Best Picture for their effort. Fortunately, that was the case with a critically praised Western epic from 1990 that Kevin Costner also produced and acted in. This bold, sweeping tale, based on the book by Michael Blake, who also adapted the screenplay, is renowned for its sharp cinematography, lofty ambitions, and admirable intentions. It also established Costner as a leading Hollywood talent. This first film is an astonishing success in itself, defying expectations and offering an idealistic traditional tale of the West that is simply not made on the size and scale anymore, though, admittedly, it has received criticism for its inaccuracies. Costner wouldn't find the same success with his labored and largely derided sophomore feature, The Postman. Nevertheless, Costner's greatest accomplishment was Dances with Wolves. For this movie, which he both directed and starred in, Costner won the big Oscar in 1991. Lieutenant John Dunbar happens to be a Union soldier who relocates to the West after the Civil War. He settles down with a tribe of Sioux, who welcome him as one of their own, and he serves as the protagonist of the story. Now we have A Perfect World. In the Clint Eastwood-directed film titled A Perfect World, two newly free criminals abduct Philip Perry, a little boy which was portrayed by T.J. Lowther. Clint Eastwood's Chief Red Bartnett is recruited to track down Philip and the two criminals, Terry James Pugh and Robert Hayes. Philip gets to know Robert during their escape from the police, as well as the world outside of his family customs. Costner's character in this movie is unlike your standard villain, because he plays someone on the other side of the law. He defends Philip from dangers as they are running. As he introduces Philip of the Halloween celebrations, his character shows Philip that he cares about him as well. In this crime drama about an escaped convict who kidnaps and flees with a little child, Costner pulled up the best act. As they're being chased by a 
determined Texas Ranger, an unusual relationship develops along the line. Next, we have The Bodyguard. In The Bodyguard, Whitney Houston plays the singer, Rachel Maroon in the love story titled Bodyguard, who has been receiving threats. Her boss appoints former Secret Service agent Frank Farmer to serve as her bodyguard. The threats against Rachel keep becoming worse, but Frank is determined to do everything it takes to keep her safe. Frank Farmer, portrayed by Costner, had worked as a Secret Service agent under President Carter and Reagan. He is hesitant to take on the responsibility of guarding Rachel, though, because of their divergent personalities. There is a point where Frank and Rachel are able to put aside their differences as the tensions between them increase. The Bodyguard from 1992 is a movie that I particularly enjoyed, I'll admit. However, it's difficult to deny the appeal, and it is undoubtedly simple to understand how it grew to be such a cultural phenomenon. Whitney Houston makes her acting debut in this romantic drama thriller, which does have a smattering of cheese over its melodramatic story. However, Whitney Houston gave a sparkling lead performance in the movie. It's obvious that the late Houston was a celebrity even without her amazing voice. She contributes that star power to this otherwise forgettable film with her vivacious wit, her friendly demeanor, and her obvious and sincere desire to give it her all. Her acting definitely elevated the bodyguard, and she and her on-screen co-star Kevin Costner had a few intimate exchanges. And finally, we have JFK. JFK is one of the most recognizable films of the 1990s and is focused on the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. After President John F. Kennedy's assassination, much of the world moved on. President Dwight D. Eisenhower took office after the culprit was apprehended and slain, and the other issues are on the horizon. One man, however, chooses to re-examine the case after reading something in a report that was published about the assassination. Jim Garrison, the district attorney of New Orleans, is tenacious in his search for the perpetrators of the murder. His curiosity prompted him to challenge the assertions made in the Warren Commission report. He discovered the numerous parties involved in the theory surrounding the case as a result of this investigation. Oliver Stone's political dramas can inevitably cause controversy, as you might anticipate. However, his celebrated but contentious JFK from 1991 is frequently regarded as one of his best works. Stone undoubtedly intended for this film to be a powerhouse, and that certainly became the case. It features an astounding cast, including Kevin Bacon, Donald Sutherland, and many more. It was nominated for eight Oscars, winning two of them. Making this movie soon after winning Best Picture helped Costner maintain his position as one of the major movie stars of the 1990s. That's it, guys. You have made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. For more celebrity and entertainment news, kindly tap the bell icon to receive notifications when a new video is posted on this channel. See you in our next video!